Well, hey everyone and happy Monday. I have been working on my uh, makes for my market. And so I have a few things to share. On Saturday, Jenna and I ventured over to Michael's just so that I can feel and see what the um, loops and threads home chenille slim. I took a picture so that I know what it is. But I, I think that's definitely something I can work with. And I appreciate everybody who suggested that brand. That was a big help. Unfortunately, our Michaels didn't have a very big selection, so I didn't make a purchase, but it wasn't a wasted trip because I was able to actually see it and feel it, you know, and just get an idea of what it would be like to work with. And I think it would definitely be very similar to the Parfait Chunky. So I made a few different things. A lot of it I've been trying to do the, you know, make multiples so that I have more than one of this, one of this, one of this, one of this. And I've been, with those, I've been trying to stick with the the lower price, you know, mom wants to just buy the kid a toy to shut them up, $5 price, you know, $10 or less type thing. But I do have some that are not, you know, that are like in the $15 range. So I started with, and I don't remember if I shared this with you or not, but I made some more possums from the, um, the free pattern on Instagram. So I have four of them out of the Parfait Chunky. So I picked up these plastic back baskets. I picked up these plastic baskets at Dollar Tree to put these little guys in so that I wouldn't have to put price stickers on each one. And also in Dollar Tree, I can't tell you where I exactly placed them at the moment, but they're the little chalkboard tags that are attached to like a clothespin to where I could clip a price onto the basket. So this looks like I would be able to fit nine in the tray comfortably and then if I wanted to really go to town with these possums, which I don't have that much fun making the possums for some reason. I don't know why. Some, some of them, like the little mini octos, they're fun to make. The, the possums, hmm. But I could double stack them and have 18 comfortably in this basket. So that's the possums. Like I said, I don't remember if I shared those with you. I know I've shared the possums before, but I don't remember if I shared that actual make with you or not. And then I was like, you know, everybody liked my little um, keychains that I changed, you know, did the, the uh, Maybell chicken out of the acrylic yarn. So I was like, what would happen if I did the possum in the acrylic yarn? How would he turn out? And it is, this is cute. Out of the acrylic yarn, I think he turned out really cute. So I probably will make one or two more of these depending on how I feel and have little possum keychains or bag charms. Then, of course, I did a couple more of the mini octos because these, uh, it's to the point now where I don't even have to look at the pattern. I can just go. So I could be watching TV or something and not have too much of an issue. But I say that before I show you this one that I must have been like sleeping. But look what I did to this guy's eyes. <laughs> I'm like, I got another one for the Misfit box. I don't know how I did that. That is just like, <laughs> way the heck off. <laughs> I was like, when I got finished, I was like, are you kidding me? What did I do? But yeah, <laughs> this one is out there. So this is goes in the Misfit toy box. 
you know, I could say, well, he's just sitting there with his head cocked like this. <laughs> I didn't do so hot with that one. So then I broke out the um, Stanley the Squid pattern. And this is one I have not done in the Parfait Chunky yet because they're kind of small with the Bernat. And, but I have to use a six and a half millimeter hook, or if I go bigger than that, I have holes and I don't want holes in it. So I did this blue one first and I'm like, okay, it says to use, uh, I forget what it said, like a 23 millimeter eye or something like that. So I'm looking through my eyes and I pull out these big giant eyes. I don't know what I was thinking. I have been having an issue with eyes the last few days. But these are 28 millimeter. <laughs> this one is a 22 millimeter. So there's just a slight difference in their eyes. <laughs> but I'm not going to throw him in the Misfit toy box. Somebody's going to love him with these big old eyes. And somebody will like this one with more normal sized eyes. So <laughs> definitely an eye issue. So I forget who someone had mentioned to make some more pigs because pigs sold well for them. And the one pattern that I purchased a while back, it's a lot of rounds, a lot. You just, you know, it's a lot of work for it to look like a little piggy bank. So I was like, well, let me see if I can just do one on my own. So... I made this pig and I'm not real fond of my color choice with the front of his nose. I can, I'll tell you that straight up front, but it would be 100% no so, even his ears. And I was trying to think of a way, cause pigs have big floppy ears. I wanted bigger floppier ears. And I might have come up with something for that, but that'll have to be on another day. But as far as the body and getting his little curly tail and his legs and his, oops, his nose right, I think I did okay. Other than my color choice here. I wanted it a darker, but it shouldn't have been that much darker than the rest of it, I don't think. So then I did him because, you know, I have to. What will he look like with acrylic yarn? Now, I used a um, Premier Basics tweed, and it has a little flex of color in it. So, I'm picking this up to show it to Jenna, and I'm like, did I show you the little pig? And I'm like, oh, no, did I use different size eyes on this? <laughs> Here we go with the eyes again. And it's not the eyes. It is one of the little color flakes like that right there that's making one eye look like it is bigger than the other. I'm telling you, I've just had an issue with the eyes. So here he is out of Premier Basics with a four millimeter hook. And I did a little better, I think, with his ears on this one because they got that little point to it. Now they're still not big and floppy, but like I said, I have an idea for that. I just, not yet, because I have a, like a bazillion other things to do, but I thought he turned out much better, not having the dark color on the tip of his nose. And this is going to end up being on a keychain or like the bag charm type thing. But I think he turned out really cute. But you see what I mean about, well, it doesn't really show on camera like it does in person where I thought one eye was bigger than the other. I just, <laughs> I don't know. And yeah, I showed you the little possum, right? I showed you a little possum keychain. So then dinosaurs was another one that everybody said to do. So I pulled out the uh, Triceratops pattern that I purchased. It came in a package with like five or six different types of dinosaurs. And I only made one Triceratops because, I don't know, I just wasn't enjoying it. I think really what the problem was is I wasn't really in the mood. I was crocheting because I, I'm getting to the point where I feel like I have to now instead of doing it because 
I think it's fun. And I don't know why I feel like that because I still have quite a bit of time. I have like six weeks. I have plenty of time. I am a procrastinator on a lot of things. And I just, I don't want to do that because I have so many other things to think about. Oh, you know what? I should have told you. I told you the mini octaves were going to be $5. And I think I did show you one of these. And I said it was going to be 7 But I changed my mind because it the calculation came out to like 7.30 and I rounded down. And I'm like, well, that's stupid. Don't round down. So I'm going to round up to $8. And that way, you know, like my labor and my materials is my cost of goods. And anything that I round up, if it goes over an even dollar amount, if I round up, that will go towards paying my booth fees and gas to get there, that type of thing. Bags to put things in. Now, of course, I'd have to sell a whole crap ton for that to add up to any money, but every little bit helps. And the squids, when I weighed them out, these come out to be a $15 item for the squids. So, yeah. And the pig between, you know, I was going to say between time and materials, it would be like a $10 item. But considering I was making this up as I went, I don't think you could count the time because I was like, let me do this to it, let me do this to it. And then I would write it down so that I'd have my notes. And so maybe, maybe, I don't know. You'd have to try it again. This one, the Triceratops, I wrote it down and it's in the other room. I want to say this one came out to be in like an $18 item between the materials and my time. But I do want to revisit the club crochet pattern for the Triceratops and make some small ones out of the uh, Parfait Chunky. Then I started last night and I've been working on these today. Um, after running through the pattern like twice, I don't even have to look anymore. I can tell you exactly what to do next and how many stitches go on that row because I have been working on little stingrays. So I haven't put the little mouths on them yet, but these are, uh, this pattern is from Teresa's Crochet Shop. And again, I had an issue with the eyes. Oh, uh, let me see. Like I picked up small eyes. See the difference? I picked up small eyes. And I picked up really big eyes. <laughs> I don't know what it is about the eyes. I guess I need a better organizational thing for the eyes. I don't know. But anyways, I made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And this one got different eyes just because it's black. I used the, like, what are they called? The kawaii eyes so that... They would show up. So that was two, four, six, eight, ten. That was eleven. Plus, I already had one made. And then I have two more bottom pieces here to do the colored part with and then put the little mouths on them. So these are like, like I said, I'm just to the point now where I don't even have to look at the pattern. I just need to pay attention to what eyes I'm grabbing, and that might be helpful. So, but this is what I was talking about, like with the white, having problems with it. It's, the white's really bad this go around. You have to be really careful. And if you make a mistake and have to frog it, forget it. You might as well just toss it or stick it in your scrap bag to use the stuffing on something else because it's going to fall apart on you. So I have two more to put a color on. I think I'm gonna do a red one and a green one, maybe another black one. So I tried that same pattern using the Bernat and 
it came out a lot bigger. I am not super fond of it. I think it's because of the color, because like I was saying last time, I don't really have a good gray color yet in the Bernat. This is what I had. And I'm pretty sure I ordered this particular one for to do dinosaurs with. And I just haven't got to it yet. But yeah, that color I don't really care for. Maybe I could make a couple like black so they'd be manta rays. And, uh, but yeah, it's a lot bigger. And then when I did weigh this out just to see if I decided to keep it, what I would um, charge for it, it ended up being a $9 item. And these, if I didn't say, these come out to a $5 item. They're pretty quick once you, when you get to the point, whiskers, you made a kitty earthquake. When you get to the point like I am where it's like, you just know what, how many stitches are in each row and how many rows in the whole bit, which is a nice thing because it's more of a traditional crochet where you're just going back and forth in rows and then you stitch them together, ragdoll style. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, I'm not super fond of this color. Other than that, I... John and I have been talking about like how I'm going to set up my booth. And I don't know because <laughs> I need, I need to most, you turned my camera. Most of the people that I see here on YouTube and they're showing their booth setups, they have a 10 by 10 space. Mine is going to be eight by eight that for an indoor spot, which is what I chose, so that I wouldn't have to worry about a canopy and, and all kinds of stuff. Like, they're going to provide me with a six-foot table. I don't have to worry about a roof over my head because I'll have one. I get to set up the day before, and everything is locked up. They have security. Um, all right, you two, don't start a fight. So we were talking about how would I set up the tables or, you know, like the, the floor layout. And I'm like, well, with it being eight by eight and these tables are two and a half feet wide, you can't have two six foot tables in there because that would make, if you did it like an L, that would be eight and a half feet. You only get eight. So you would like need maybe a four foot table and put it up against it and then you would have six and a half one direction, six the other, and get an L shape. <sighs> or I was thinking I could take, like go to Dollar Tree and get maybe a cheapo depot tablecloth and use my totes as a table. And you know, cause I could double stack them and with some of these couple of racks, like Jenna got me a couple of racks for my birthday. And I have the one produce rack that I purchased. And I have this other shelving, which is a lot smaller than I thought it was going to be. That like folds up like a ladder and the shelves just fold down. And which was the reason that I got it because it did that. But it ended up, I guess I have a size perception issue because when I order something, it's never what I think it is, you know, size wise. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to do that. Now, if I had tables here, I could sit there and play with that and move them around and, and see what I could do with that. I just, uh, I am open for suggestions, people. I am open for suggestions. So, yeah, we were talking about that, and then I decided, well, I don't want to wait too long to order other things that I need, like bags. Um, and I, said, I already told you I got the little chalkboard signs from uh, Dollar Tree. And I think it was like four in a package for the dollar twenty-five plus tax, and... 
I picked up a couple of those packages and that was to meant for clipping it on this. And I also thought, well, maybe I could take that little clothespin and clip it to the bigger item so that I don't have to attach a tag to it. But you know how many of those I'd have to buy? <laughs> Too many. Um, so I went ahead and I ordered these tags that have strings, which is against my better judgment, but also these specially special shaped, I forget what it's called, um, like safety pins. When I get them, I'll show you. They, the stuff will be starting to be delivered starting tomorrow through the 10th of the month. It's going to be staggered. The bags, the tags, the pins. Um, I ordered the six foot tablecloth, the spandex kind to go over it. Um, I know there's more than that because I know it seemed like it was a lot of stuff that I ordered and I just can't think right now. Oh, and then my square reader came in. And that was interesting because I've heard so many people say, oh, it costs like $50 to get a square. And mine was free. And even if it wasn't free, it would have been $10. And all I ordered was the little one that you plug into your phone. And you use your phone as the, the, the thing. And then you just swipe the card through. So your first one is free and then after that those are ten dollars they did have others that were more like a little terminal that were more expensive they also have little uh, bluetooth printers if you wanted to print up a receipt and i'm not there yet i'm not ready for that type of investment yet because i don't know if i want to continue to do this on a permanent basis yet i want to test the waters before i make huge investments Oh, one of the other things that I ordered was one of those wired, wire cubed shelves that you see everybody setting their stuff on. The reason I got one of those was it's something I can use at home. You never have enough yarn storage space, right? But that's something I could use at home if I don't do more markets after this one. I will admit, though, I'm having fun, but I am... I get bored. I got to get a new, a new pattern. <laughs> so, so I might have to spend money every week just to buy a new pattern so that I can do something new and then, you know, still like make a dozen or so stingrays or a couple of dozen little octopus or, or whatever. So now there's a lot of patterns like the squid I hadn't touched since my first one and Actually, the Stingray, I hadn't touched since my first one. Same goes for the um, Triceratops. So that wasn't bad, but some of that Burnett blanket's hard to work with. I feel like the yarn is working me instead of me working the yarn. The Parfait is so much more pleasant. But now that I know, now after I've made my trip to Michael's, now that I know that I will have an alternative, and I, I still have to order online, to have a selection, such as it is, but I will have an alternative. So I'll finish up my other two Stingray, and then I'm going to <sighs> go back to Club Crochet and make a few of their little mini Triceratops. That one wasn't so bad. It wasn't because I can do it out of the Parfait, and I won't have to fight the yarn. I know. I'm spoiled. What can I tell you? So from here on, I have to be careful with my eyes so that I don't get them mixed up before I put the backs on, double, triple, quadruple check, make sure I have the right size and they're on the right rows so that I don't end up with another misfit in that toy box. I do need to make one more trip to Dollar Tree though. And I should have thought about it when I was there but I didn't, but I am now as so I'm sitting here picking all the little fuzzies off of the little stingrays. I need to get a couple of lint rollers and Dollar Tree's the cheapest place to do that. So next time I'm up that way, I am going to grab a few lint rollers. All right, 
I gotta get back to work and pick up my hook and my yarn and get some more plushies made because how many is enough?